Hi, I'm Jim Lester and today I want to talk to you about how to meet and date the kind of women you've always dreamed of. After reading Marnie Kinris' Get the Girl Code Review, you will have little doubt of exactly how you can follow three easy steps with specific directions that will get you the hot, beautiful women you want every time. It doesn't matter if you're short, fat, broke, or feel like you're just not good with the ladies. Marnie Kinris methods will work wonders for you as they have for thousands of us regular guys. Go now to Marnie Kinris Get the Girl Code Review.com or simply click the link directly below this video screen. Hi, I'm Michael Fiore, and in this short video, I'm going to do two things as a personal favor for you. I'm going to introduce you to a pair of magical breasts that will get you laid. And I'm going to teach you a secret, recently discovered evolutionary cheat code that opens up the mind, heart, and panties of almost any woman you want. Now, if you've ever played a video game, you already know what a cheat code is and what it does. A cheat code is a simple, secret sequence of button presses that allows you to skip all the BS and the work every other guy has to go through and suddenly get godlike powers which give you absolute control so you can get exactly what you really want. And this scientifically proven evolutionary cheat code I'm about to reveal does the exact same thing to the female mind. The cheat code is a trick of female psychology that allows even the dorkiest guy to subtly press secret buttons in a girl's mind without her having any idea what you're doing to create a powerful emotional response. Whether that be lust or love or something deeper you've been holding on to desperately for years, craving in the dark hours of the night, not telling anyone about. And the great thing is that the thousands of guys who have mastered this cheat code already discovered it works to create connection and sexual desire with hot, beautiful, intelligent, amazing women, even if you're short, fat, ugly, broke, have no sense of humor, have no confidence, or get so nervous around girls that you'd rather chew off your own leg than talk to one. So you don't really have an excuse. Now I'm going to tell you exactly how to use this evolutionary cheat code in just a second. But first, I have to tell you why I care so much about you getting good with girls, getting a girlfriend, and getting laid as much as you want. And to do that, I have to tell you an incredibly embarrassing story I've never shared before because it could ruin my reputation and my life. Like I said, my name is Michael Fiore, and as weird as it is for me to even say it, I'm an internationally known relationship expert, I'm an Amazon and Wall Street Journal best-selling author, I'm married to a gorgeous redhead, hotter, nicer, and sexier than any girl I thought I'd ever get, 
But beneath all that, hidden from view and scared of the light, I'm a dork, a nerd, a hopeless geek who was so scared of women and had no idea how to talk to them. Probably just like you. All through high school and college and my 20s, I was frustrated and horny and confused by girls and, well, pissed off. Pissed off because the beautiful girls in my class who I wanted so damned much with their short skirts and toned thighs and smiles and smells and poofy 90s hairstyles treated me like I was sexually invisible. Even though I was smart and nice and funny, the girls I lusted after and craved and would kill to have as my girlfriend ignored me. Laura Robbins actually laughed when I asked her out, making my testicles crawl up inside my body in shame. Sherry Martin told me she just thought of me as a friend. Aaron Smith said, Mike, any girl would be lucky to have you, and I can't believe you're single. And these same girls threw themselves at the dumb jocks and idiots who treated them like crap, used them, and broke their hearts, while I just stood there and watched. And of course, like a sucker, I was there when they came crying back to me afterwards, like Sarah Reynolds did, sobbing about why she couldn't just find a nice guy who would treat her right, while I was right there, gritting my teeth and ready to do anything for her or to her. But she just ignored me, like every girl did. It wasn't her fault. I'll explain why in a second. But she thought of me as some emotional Ken doll. Fun to toy with, but that's it. College was like being an accidental vegetarian at the all-you-can-eat sex buffet. Absolutely gorgeous women everywhere, yet I continued to sexually starve. My dad would call me up and say, Mike, you must be swimming in girls. And I'd lie to him and say, oh yeah, dad. But I wasn't. In fact, I can count the number of women I slept with in college on two fingers of one hand. They weren't that attractive, and I think they only slept with me out of pity or to save their own low self-esteem. After college, I moved to L.A. and spent two long years in a sexual desert. I was working in the TV industry, and everywhere I'd go, I'd see models and actresses and porn stars and toned, tanned flesh. But, and this is embarrassing, the only female contact I got was when I tricked a co-worker into giving me a hug. Heather was stressed out about a production budget at work, and I said, Oh, poor thing, and hugged her like I was her brother. And even though it was just a joke to her, even though I wasn't even attracted to her, I stole that fake affection. I just savored that touch for as long as she would let me, feeling the heat from her body, smelling her hair, wanting more than anything to be wanted. And for eight more years, things actually got worse. I moved to Seattle and fell into and out of a horrible, sexless relationship where we fought constantly, and she made me ashamed of my sex drive, my penis, my desire to sleep with the woman I thought I loved. Once I was single, I read books by pickup artists and felt this mix of desperate hope and horrible disgust welling up inside me as I tried using lame lines on drunk chicks at clubs. And even though once or twice I got a girl to go home with me for clumsy, passionless, disconnected sex, I just got lonelier. I just felt more hollow. I just watched more porn and got angrier and more pissed off. Angry at the smart, amazing, beautiful girls I wanted who would never fall for lines and who just ignored me, put me in the friend zone, or laughed at the lame lines I'd learned from gurus and called me a player behind my back. At the tall, confident guys the hottest chicks wanted and passed me over for again and again. And most of all, I was so angry at myself for not being good enough, for being desperately unattractive, no matter how much I worked out or how I dressed, for not understanding what women actually wanted, needed, to truly fall for a guy and give themselves to a guy, mind, body, and soul. So what changed everything about my life? What made women easy? What gave me the power to connect with women so they actually approached, hit on, and talked to me? Remember when I told you I was going to introduce you to a pair of magical breasts? I was in Las Vegas at a business conference four years ago when I first saw Miss X. She was hot, short, and spiky heels, pretty. She had and has amazing breasts. I'm not proud to say it, but I tried a line on her I'd read in some pickup book and watched in horror as her eyes got wide, her mouth formed into a smile, and she laughed at me. See, Miss X wasn't just some hot chick at the hotel bar. She was actually kind of famous. She was a girl who was famous for helping geeky guys like me get girls. She had a podcast, she wrote for magazines, and she was even on TV all the time. And sitting there at the bar, she looked at me and she said, I'm not going to sleep with you. But if you want me to, 
I'll teach you the three steps to let you play women like a video game. To seduce, date, marry any girl you want. A little confused, I said, sure. And I sat down and we started talking. Within minutes, I was opening up about everything. About my fumbling attempts to get a great girlfriend since high school. My failed career as a pickup artist who hated using lines on girls but had no idea what else to do. About my confusion around women. About my anger. And then this beautiful woman reached her hand across the table and with a smile I could feel in my pants said something I wasn't expecting at all. Women are liars. Not to you, but to ourselves. And then she explained the desire gap and the flat-out war going on in every woman's mind. The war between what a woman thinks she wants, a nice guy who will be her friend, and what thousands of years of evolution have programmed her to want. See, no matter what we think, when it comes to sex and love, humans are still just dumb animals, unconsciously trying to propagate our genes through history. And just like you can't make yourself fall for an ugly girl, no matter how nice she is, no matter if she's your best friend, because evolution demands that you try to date the hottest women you can find, women have absolutely no control over who they're primarily attracted to, strong, powerful men who make them feel safe and demand their respect. It's not that women want to be with jerks, it's that jerks, without even knowing it most of the time, trigger powerful emotional responses in women that trip her evolution circuits and trick her into feeling attraction. We'd been sitting there for hours at this point. I was three or maybe 12 drinks in, and I was depressed. Depressed because I wasn't a strong, powerful man women would be attracted to, and depressed because I didn't want to be a jerk, to be mean to women just to get them to sleep with me. So I asked her, is there a way to be myself, to be a good guy and still get the girl? She said, Mike, knowledge is power. And the knowledge I'm about to give you will make you more powerful with women than you ever thought possible. And that's when Miss X taught me the code.